A good way to assess the effectiveness of an e-learning session is to add a question at the end of the learning mode. At this point, I have decided to assess the readiness of the e-learner by adding a question called hotspot. And in a short period of time, in particular 10 seconds, the learner would have to click onto a specific area of the engine picture that we have uh, utilized in this tutorial. So I'm gonna preview this slide. So I'm gonna say from this slide, and I'm gonna pretend that uh, as a learner in this case, I know exactly where I'm supposed to click. When I click on a correct spot, Captivate will uh, define that area with a orange spot, and then I will have to press submit. In this case, it says that my score is a 10 out of 10, because one question out of one is correct. So 100% accuracy. I want to simulate a few more cases now. I'm gonna play the preview one more time, but in this case, I'm gonna click on the wrong spot. I'm gonna click, for example, on the left here, and then I'm gonna press submit. In this case, Captivate will tell me that I've clicked on the incorrect spot and will ask me to click anywhere else or otherwise Y on my keyboard in order to continue. Now the result will say that my score is zero with a maximum score of 10 because of zero correct question out of one, so 0% accuracy. Another case that I want to simulate now is to play this slide one more time, but this time I'm gonna try to skip the question. Captivate will consider this one as a failing the question because I have said that the question cannot be skipped. In this case, you will have to inform your e-learner that the question cannot be skipped. The last scenario I want to simulate is when I click on preview and I will uh, pretend that I didn't have enough time to find an answer. I have set, in fact, 10 seconds as the time limit to answer the question. After 10 seconds, Captivate will prompt me in the middle of the screen that the time to answer the question has expired. So I have to press continue or I have to press Y in order to continue. Also, in that case, it will say that I failed the quiz because the question wasn't answered timely. Now, in order to replicate what I've done, I'm going to create another project and in here I'm going to simulate what I've just done. I have added a quiz slide just by clicking onto the menu quiz and then the question slide. Here I will be choosing hotspot quiz and I'm going to add one question only. Here I can choose whether the question is graded or not. If it's graded, it means that it's part of the score at the end of the quiz. I'm going to press OK now. Here we go. The question looks uh, on a white background, if I want to change the background, I have to work on the slide itself rather than on individual items, but I will take care of it in a short while. What I want to do first, I want to go to insert and I'm going to choose image. I'm going to choose the same engine image that I've been using so far and I'm going to stretch it larger by holding down the shift key to maintain the proportion. Now, I want to drag the correct notification, incorrect notification, and uh, skip notification all the way to the other side of the slide because my hot spot area will need to be overlapped to a specific area on the right hand side. I also want to start working with the properties and the outlook of each individual item. So instead of focusing on the quiz properties, I will jump for a second onto the properties of the individual items. Now, for example, I want to say that this hot spot area doesn't have a blue stroke, but a more visible stroke, such as red or green, for example. I can also stretch the size of the stroke to make it even more visible. However, this one would be fantastic for training because it will focus on a specific area. But if my goal now is to assess the learner, I will certainly hide the stroke. Therefore, the area is not visible at all. It means that the learner must know what to click. The next thing I want to look into is to click onto the quiz properties one more time and scroll down and you will see that I have a few options. Here, options allow me to turn on and off 
the caption for correct answer. In this case, I'm happy to show to the learner that the answer was correct. Otherwise, if you want to aggregate the answer only to the end, then you can decide to turn it off. What I turned on in the example that we have just seen was a time limit. And here I will decide that the seconds limit for this slide is only 10. I also want to turn on a timeout caption. When I click on timeout caption, it automatically plays a timeout default caption. In this case, I'm going to bring it in the middle of the screen. So it's very clear to the learner that it ran out of time to answer these quiz. One additional check that I want to make among the action is that on success, the slide playback will carry on and we go to the next question or to the summary at the end. But I also want to limit the number of attempts. By default, it comes with one attempt. But if you don't like that, and if you want to be very generous with your e-learner, you can define this one to infinite attempts. In this case, I'm going to be happy with one only. Now, if I want to change the background, as I mentioned before, we will need to click on two properties, click on the background, uncheck use master slide background, uncheck project background, and finally, we can click onto the stage swatch here. From that pop-up menu, we can choose black background. In this case, I have to remember to change the color of my caption to white. Once also this is done, we are ready to run the question for our learners. We're going to preview. We are going to click on the hotspot area. We are going to click submit and we will get a prompt that we have click on the correct hotspot. This is the result to our quiz. One last edit to the visual part of our quiz is to define how the hotspot will be marked with an animation. You notice that under the quiz properties, under general properties, we will have hotspot default animation. We can click on to browse and uh, Captivate will open the inbuilt animations. In particular, I like to work with uh, very clear animations. I like to work with the orange circle or the orange square or triangle, but something orange, in particular when we are working on a black background. I can turn on as a sample the orange arrow circle and I'm going to press open. Uh, when we go back to the preview, it will uh, highlight the hotspot area that I've clicked with the animation that we have just selected. Here we go. Here is the orange arrow. There are plenty of other markers that we can click from the inbuilt library and we can customize further our appearance just by clicking the individual items of the questions and choose the properties tab in order to change the appearance. Quizzes are an excellent way to grade your e-learning, but I always recommend to make sure that you have done enough training slides before jumping into a quiz slide so your learners will be ready to answer the quiz correctly.